Welcome, and thank you for joining us for another one of Mike and Billy's Whiskey Reviews. Guess who this guy is? I'm not even going to say his name. Not the same guy this is, but today we bring you the Ardbeg Corey Vrecken. How much do I love Ardbeg? Phew. Who doesn't like Ardbeg? Idiots. There's not, you know how it is. You know you know that everyone loves Ardbeg. It's because there's not enough Ardbeg to go around. They only make three whiskeys in their core range. That's the ten year old and the Ugadale, which we brought you way back in like the single digit whiskey reviews. And they make this third one, the Corey Vrecken, fifty seven point one percent ABV. <laughs> Bang. We are getting Amish hey, man. But here's the other thing. I don't believe it's there's not enough to go around. There's gotta be enough to go around. Well it's just a great whiskey. It's a great whiskey and a great whiskeys. And the problem is so many people buy them, the demand's so high for them, they can't let that stock mm. age. But the, also the problem with our big it was mothballed in the nineties, as I've said in my previous uh Which reviews. I love kind of. I kinda of love that. That part of the story makes me happy a little bit. Yeah. Because it, it got sidelined and then came back out of nowhere and it's fucking amazing. Whiskey lovers brought it back. It's a Oh, Whiskey sorry. sorry. Lovers brought it back. We're actually at the tattoo shop filming this right now. <laughs> we may leave this in or cut it. Uh, so we're getting a phone call. Uh, I'm, you, I, everyone knows I'm a tattoo shop. Can, can we turn down the volume? Uh, I don't know how to do that. It'll stop after this one, I think. Sorry about that, guys. We keep it. We keep it real. You know what? You're not. We're not known for editing our videos. We're known for keeping it real. That's what we're doing. So let's get back to the review. Sorry about that. <laughs> The review is where Arbic, Mothball, mid 90s. They came back around 2001, and you know, it's not a lot of time. It's only 2017. Can I ask you a question? They don't have a lot of extra whiskeys. Mike has a lot of knowledge that I don't have. Do you know if it was the same people? Or did no. somebody, that like another corporation took over? No, that, yeah, someone else bought it. A conglomeration of money that we don't have. Yeah, another corporation brought I, I, I used to know who actually owns this distillery now. Mike, did this, this dude knows more. Hennessy. Oh yeah, it's owned by Hennessy. Like, oh, um, we discussed that. Yeah, yeah, we, we discussed that in a previous one. Anyway, the phone's got me distracted. Got me distracted I'm sorry, guys. I'm from sorry. this high-end single malt whiskey. So hold on. Let me tell you what else do I want to say about Ardbeg. This of the three whiskeys in the core range of the Ardbeg, this is the most expensive. Oh. Who knows if it's is so, old? Uh, Columbus, Ohio. Eighty-eight Q2. bucks. Q two. Q three. Eighty-eight bucks. Oh, Q3, yeah. So a little bit about um, the history of the name. Corey Vrecken is a whirlpool that is can just I Can I stop? Will you remember? I can smell it from here. Oh, my God. Oh, it's a strong Decadent. smell. Decadent. Would be strong, the strong, smoky, <sighs> peaty smell. I, I can tell already. It's going to be hot. I love this whiskey. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, I was, I was going to tell them about the name. Corey Vrecken is actually the name of a whirlpool. It's just north of it. I believe between the islands of Jura and Scapa, I want to say. Anyway, it's the second largest whirlpool. In the, the world. world, right? Yeah, in yeah. the world. Um, I think there was, there was a story that a prince wanted to marry um, the Lord of the Isles' daughter. I guess the Isler or some island that used to have a Lord of the Isles. Which, by the way, that was a whiskey. It was really good. She sounds odd. Side note. Anyway, so the guy said to the prince, like, all right, well, you can marry my daughter, but only if you essentially survive a night in the world war or a couple nights or something like that. Anyway, I don't think he survived. I think he couple did die. Couple nights? I think he did die. And... Great story, yeah, and a better whiskey. Let's get to it. Fifty-seven point one percent ABV, it. Billy. No uh, water in this right now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest with you. That high of an alcohol content scares me. Uh, is your, is your first time to Corey Brown? It is. It is. Try, you, try you, lightly. you bring me several good things. Smoke. Surprisingly sweet. I was I was thinking hospital all day, but it's surprisingly sweet. There is a fruity red fruit sweet element to it. I get none of that. I get a little bit of brown sugar and smoke. Like, not like your campfire smoke. Like tar smoke. Yes. Like a tire burning. Yep. But somehow beautiful because you're drunk and talking to your 16-year-old girlfriend. No, when I say tire. Because you're 16-year-old, not because of because when I say burnt tire, that doesn't necessarily sound good. But I mean burnt tire in the best way. It reminds me of being a kid at the S Bridge, burning tires, drinking beers more than I'm supposed to, and I'm 16 years old and I'm hanging out with. My... Yeah. Oh yeah, life uh, goes on. Smoky, bit of maybe. I don't know if there's any peat there at all. 
Oh, it's super smoky. Smoky as heck. It's a different kind of smoke than, say, Lagavulin or a Lafroig smoke by, by far. I feel like every... I feel like every video I mention this, Lagavulin is our go-to, so we love peat, we love smoke, everyone knows this. Uh, there is a sweetness there, but I don't I, I don't get the red fruit that you're getting. I've had this whiskey a lot. I always get like a peppery oh, smell in the nose. Well played. Well I, played. You know, I don't know if it's like, I don't know. It could be the sharpness of the alcohol. But for 57.1% ABV, it doesn't smell that sharp on the nose. Let's do the legs. It's not terrible on the nose. I forgot I didn't do the legs and the color, forgive me. A little distracted. Um, legs, legs come by down pretty quick. They're pretty thin. Our big is all natural color, non chill filtered. Just to give you an idea of the color, what would you call this color, Bill? God, I don't even like know. Like a dirty like a gold. Smart amber, dirty gold. I don't even know. What's a gold? Like a. It depends. If you're here in the sunlight, it looks normal gold, like just yeah. like a pure gold bar. The color. The color of this wall you see behind us is what we, we what we go up against. So I tend to go out toward the sunlight. Uh, it's light. It's light. Light gold, dirty gold. It's not terrible. I would say it's a medium of what we normally do. Like, does that change anything? Helps, maybe. No, it's the same. Okay, so decent legs, natural color, Andrea filtered, fantastic. I do want to say one thing about the ABV. Fifty-seven point one is a high ABV. However. <laughs> This is not to be confused with a cask strength whiskey. Cask strength whiskey, whatever comes out of the cask, that's what the strength is. Obviously, they've watered this down, so it came out at a higher strength, mm. maybe 60 plus. And all that tells you is this is probably young whiskey. So as Billy gets his first little taste of the Vrecken, I'm going to let him tell you what he is picking up, why I drink a little bit myself. Billy, what do you got for us? Right off the rip. Oh, smoky. Good lord. It's it there's quite a bit of burn there that lingers. Wow. My tongue is on fire. Oily. Oily. It, I'm like I'm literally getting nothing but just pure smoke right now. And I'm not saying. Please don't take that in a bad way. It's really, really good. There's a, there's a sweetness and a softness to it. Even though the burning is going on, I don't even know how to describe this. It's amazing. It, it's, it's very simple, but extremely complex at the same time. Um, wow, it's still oily. Like, I don't even know, it's probably been a minute now. Still coating the mouth. You're still getting that long burn. Oh, there comes a little bit of cocoa. I feel like I'm getting a little bit of really burnt dark chocolate. Like burnt dark chocolate, not like you're eating some 80%. Like it got burnt in the pan and then you ate it because you're, you know, like me, an idiot. Wow. I'm getting definitely dark chocolate. The first thing that hits my mouth is spice. I'm still smoky. I'm still smoking. I don't know how much spice is. I don't know which spices they even are, but it's super spicy. Are you getting the oiliness? I am. But this has been in French oak casks, which are active casks, apparently. Uh -huh. So French oak as compared to American or Spanish oak, it, it always imparted more spiciness in whiskeys than I've always heard. There's a ton of spice on that Cory Brecken they're, straight. They're absolutely, yes. You're right. I don't know what it is, spice-wise. It's not nutmeg. <laughs> no, I not even. It's like more aggressive than. It's like it took cinnamon and made it evil and dark, because wow. it is super spicy. And I don't even know what spice. It, it, the te the tongue really lights up in the back half of your tongue. Yeah. So there is bitterness. There is dark chocolate, for sure. I would say besides dark chocolate, I can get a ton of spice, <clears throat> smoke. Are you saying just regular dark chocolate? No, dark, dark, bitter, like dark, burnt, chocolate. bitter, in the pan. And then you bitter, it. bitter, 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 and maybe a little bit of maybe it's, what, it's, it's, like espresso bean. Ooh, ooh, it's just now the tingling is starting to subside. Just now, I I actually make my own espresso every morning. I have a DeLonghi, or maybe I'm saying that wrong, espresso machine, like a single shot, and it's pump driven, so it gets you know the right temperature. And I get beans, whole beans from um, 
Crimson or not Crimson Cup. Um, oh, Crimson Cup's good though. It is good. And Columbus, Ohio. Crimson Cup is really good. Um, but even better, I found a Stoff's. They made my nose run a little bit. Stoff's coffee makes a really Stoff's nice is bean. Amazing. Yeah. So I get um, some of the, these beans, and it's like a Sudan or the Ethiopian blend of, of dark roast, and it kind of smells like if you not the whole coffee bean, but like right when you grind it up in the you know in the morning. Yeah, yeah. You smell that fresh ground coffee, a little bit of that bitterness in the back, which I which I like. This is um, a different art bag. You know, the 10 year old's lemon lime and, and very consistent, and it's a great whiskey, especially for the price point. Probably the best Scotch whiskey, in my opinion, under $50 is that art big 10. The Ubi Dale, one of my favorite whiskeys, love the Ubi Dale. Oh, God, yeah. And this is the most expensive. Wait, 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 wait. wait. It, the box says no swimming. Do you know what that is? They like to be funny at our big. It's a very fancy bottle and fancy packaging for essentially a very young whiskey. <laughs> I have no idea how old this whiskey no is. No swimming. I would say 10 year old whiskey, I'm guessing. I'm like, guessing. I'm not sure. I'm going to be honest with you. I love this whiskey. Have you not been honest with me? I'm kidding. I know it's an expression. All right, so let me ask you this. I'm on, I, put, you... I, I put a little nice little doll of water in there. Let's see what. Has opened up in the bus. It's sweeter with water. Still get pepper. I don't. I don't like the verb sweeter. Um, it's softer. I still get all the same shit. Agreed. Softer. But more you tamed, you make you made a bit. You mentioned sweetness initially. I did. And I, I did. did. I did not. I get now. But now that you said that, now I'm thinking, I can pick it up more. I think, I think the most beautiful thing about me and Mike is uh, we completely have different palates. I mean, we agree on one thing, log of woman. And that is it, fully and only. Well, everything else, we have our own, you know, views. And, and yeah. I, get, I get something different out of everything that you get out of. Well, I, I just think you picked up sweetness initially without water, where it, it, where it took me a minute. And it does. And it, now it does smell sweet. Do you pick up any of the fruits at all now? Red fruit? It still smells sweet. Like a berry fruit, maybe? It's, it's sort of uh, brown sugary to me, because I just cooked something with brown sugar the other night. And I'm getting a lot of brown sugar. But it's not... I don't say that the water sweetened it. I say the water softened it. There's something... It's gorgeous. It's really, really simple, but it's gorgeous. I can't it's so tell. maybe or or maybe it's so complex, my simple little brain can't fucking comprehend. You know what? I don't know if this makes any sense. What I'm about to say, but sometimes it feels thin in some smells, and then some smells feel so dense and oily. Right. Like there is like a. It almost changes on you. Yeah. Yeah. Remember Black Arts? Bloody, you were really, go watch the Black Arts video. As far as, I think my friend's saying, as far as an evolving whiskey, is that whiskey kept evolving on the nose, but especially on the palate. And why Billy's giving you a uh, second taste with water, I'm going to go a little bit darker into, or a little bit darker, a little bit further into my belief that this whiskey does have some nice red fruit flavors on the nose. Smells like road tar in a good way. There's so much alcohol there. 57.1 is not for the faint of heart. Wow. But there's something on the nose I'm not, even though I've had a few of these bottles and I'm not exactly picking up, or I cannot identify them completely. It's like, it's an oily resin. It's some, some, it's a, I don't know if it, it's like a tar and a resin combined. Wow, that is just really a little bit of light sugar, light white sugar on the outside. You're going white sugar. White sugar that was burnt. I don't know. I, I, I don't know how to quantify the sweetness of this one. So I'm getting, I'm still getting the oily coat of the mouth. I'm still getting a lot of burn, a lot of burn. Um, I'm, I'm getting earlier than last time, I'm getting the cocoa, like a dark, dark cocoa. Possibly even burnt on the pan where your mom was making cookies and you scrape a little bit off your fingernail and eat it. I'm picking it. I think I know now. I'm definitely with you on the spicy. There's some, like a white peppery, just, wow. Wow. What a, what a complicated whiskey to explain, <laughs> honestly. This, I mean, 
I don't know if it's the alcohol content that's throwing me off, maybe, because it's, it's a little more bitey. It's super spicy. I don't think it's alcohol. I think it's spice. I think it's that French oak cask. Super spicy. But I'll tell you what. I think the sweetness, it's that Ardbeg sweetness that you can really see on the 10-year-old. If you ever want to know what the Ardbeg sweetness really is, have a glass or a dram or Glencairn glass of Ardbeg 10. Finish the glass. Yeah. Put it out and leave it overnight. Oh. I saw somebody else say this on a video, and they were so right. Really? And then in the morning when you wake up, you smell that. Oh, my goodness. That sweetness is incredible. Because the alcohol kind of burns off? Or Al alcohol evaporates. All that's left is that distillery characteristic, that distillery sweetness. Because at our, our bag... Cider! What's it? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm getting a cidery quality there. That's what I can't explain. The apple. I'm getting a cidery the quality. Apple. That's what it kind of it kind of found at the beginning, but um, with our big that's that sweetness, but the sweetness I, I thought it was a little bit of apple, but I think the apple is separate. I really think the sweetness now is to me the our big ten is lemon and lime, a yeah. little bit of vanilla. Well, not a little bit, a decent amount of vanilla. Yeah, and that's what I think it is. I think it's a lemon or a lime that has been drenched in road tar. Oh, I would eat that. I can't put my finger on exactly what that sweet oily smell is, but that's the best way I can describe it. Here's the tough question. Score. 89 out of 100. I was going to say 88. Are you still going to say 88? I am going to say 88. Okay. I'm saying 88. 80 out of 100, 89 out of 100. 88, 89. That's pretty close. It's a pretty good one. You know, and these things are made in batches, so what I will say about this is this particular one was... Bottled in 2000. Sorry about the light. 15. Sorry, 2015. It was on the little dimple where the last number was. So I have noticed little variations in these batches. Not big, not big. Well, that's so, what you want, though. Don't you want that? I want that as a consumer. Well, I, I want a consistent product. It's consistent, but anytime you get a non age statement whiskey, I'll say this. Um, you can kind of tell little variations of it. Like, if you ever had uh, um, Avala or Abana, those really vary from batch to batch, but I think they do that on purpose. I had a 2013 version of this once and it had more, it had a little bit more vanilla in it. Or maybe I was just early on my whiskey journey because palates do change. So anyway, Billy, you were at an 88, 88. I am at an 89. I appreciate this whiskey a little bit more than you do. That's fine. Um, it's. It, it, I think 88's a solid score. It's probably no. more closer to truth. Um, it's not that I hate this whiskey, because I mean, eighty-eight seems like uh, nowadays you get an eighty-eight. It's like, oh, you're you're fucking Jim Beam or something. Not at all. I'm not sure that I'm ready for this whiskey. This is a very simple, complex whiskey, which sounds completely ridiculous. It's so simple, but it's so over the top. Like, I love this. I would drink this every day. You know what I mean? If we were having a steak, I would drink this. It is. It does have a very meaty characteristic, meaty, savory characteristic to it. Oh, I gotta tell you, I couldn't drink this whiskey every day. This whiskey is tough. Oh, I'm tough though. 57, 57.1 ABV. It's aggressive. You couldn't drink a lot of this. <laughs> I'm already feeling it. Kind of. Yeah, fifty-seven. I mean, yeah. you were talking nearly 120 Ooh. proof. Ooh. Over 115 <laughs> proof. It's high. Anyway, with couple that, things. Couple things. We want you to. You've already walked, what, it's been like 12 minutes or something? Like button. Thank smash, you. like Hulk, smash the like button. Please subscribe. Please comment. Mike, if he has nothing to do all day, he owns his own business, he's rich as shit, just like, subscribe, comment, comment, and then he'll comment with you. You guys can be friends and stuff. I don't care about any of you, literally. He will, I'm kidding. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, subscribe, please, thank you. We like, have so many. We are doing so well. I think we've been doing this for less than a year. You guys are literally carrying us on your backs like fucking warriors. And give us a like. Cost you nothing. If literally, you, it takes you, two seconds. You could be doing it right now if you made it this far. Um, aside from that, you know, we uh, this is definitely a whiskey I would w be worth trying. A, as we mentioned before, at eighty-eight dollars U.S. Uh, currently now in Q thousand or uh, Q three of two thousand seventeen. I think it's worth the money. I've spent more. On worse. Absolutely. It's worth your time. It's worth your buy. Check it out. See what you think of it. As always, we want to thank you for joining us for another one of Mike and Billy's Whiskey Reviews. And happy drinking.